Welcome to the tutorial to build your first game in Core. In this video, we'll jump into the Core Editor and build a game using a provided Core framework, which allows you to start your project from a prototype and build from there. To learn more about creating in the Core Editor, see our Core Editor tutorial video. In the next few minutes, you'll learn the basics of Core frameworks, content, objects, materials, collision, player and game settings, as well as how to add and move spawn points all in this short tutorial video. You can customize as much as you want while building this multiplayer arena shooter. In this case, we'll be using the third-person deathmatch framework. All right, let's get started. With Core open, click the Create tab in the left side menu. Select Create New Game. Next, select View Frameworks in the Core Game Frameworks option. Select the deathmatch framework. You can also choose to test the first-person deathmatch framework and still follow along with this tutorial. Now you can enter the name of your project. Don't worry, you can change it later. When you're ready, click Create. The deathmatch framework gives you a complete game arena and shooter functionality out of the box, including a UI or user interface. You can see an arena, a health bar in the bottom left corner, the objective in the top left corner, and a message banner in the center. This is the arena for your game. Before we start customizing, let's test player movement. Press the play button or the equals key to enter preview mode to view your project as a player. As in any core game project, you already have a working character controller. Move the character with W, A, S, and D keys, jump with space, crouch with C, and ride a mount with G. Okay, let's take a look at shooter mechanics. Shoot the default gun with the left mouse button. Open and close a door with the F key. Press tab to pause the preview. Press the stop button or the equals key to stop the preview. You can also test multiplayer gameplay. Core projects also include multiplayer networking by default. Because this is a crucial component of this game, it is important to test using multiplayer preview mode as much as possible. Click the Multiplayer Preview button to switch the preview mode to multiplayer. Press the Play button to start the preview. This will open a separate game window for each player. Pro tip, you can use Alt-Enter to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. You can also use the window and arrow keys to dock the screen side by side. Now let's customize that arena. Core gives you a massive library of 3D assets, materials, sounds, and components for making games which can be found in the core content window. If you can't find it or have closed this window, you can reopen the core content window by going to View, Core Content in the top menu bar. Let's check out the core content. Drop down the 3D Objects menu to see the props and objects that can be added to the scene. Click on the Nature subcategory. Choose a bush and some other props to drag into the scene. You can customize however you wish. Once you've placed your props, move, rotate, and scale the objects using the top toolbar transform tools to enhance the scene and make your arena more dynamic. One feature to note when placing objects in Core is collision. By default, Core objects have collision properties turned on, so players will bump into objects and not walk through them. To change this, click on the bush to select it and open the properties window. Find the collision property and change it to force off. You should now be able to walk into a bush and use it as a hiding place in the game. To see how well the bush works for concealment, test this in preview mode. Switch the number of players in multiplayer preview mode to two. Press the play button to start the preview. In the first game window, move into the bush and crouch with C. Now move the second player to the bush to see how much cover it provides. You may want to scale the bush to allow people to hide at a glance, but also be slightly visible so people can notice if they're really looking. Once you've placed your props, let's add some materials to objects. Materials allow you to add colors and textures to the objects in the scene by dragging and dropping them onto objects. In the core content window, drop down the materials menu to see the options. Pick a material and drag it onto one of the objects in the scene, and that's it! You can apply a material to multiple objects by selecting them at the same time. Use Shift and left click to select more objects. Left click and drag to select objects in an area. 
if you'd like to apply materials to more than one object by keyword or tag, type wall into the search bar to show only the object's name wall. Press enter to select everything from the search. Choose a material and drag it on to one of the walls. The material will apply to all selected objects, in this case, the walls. You can also select the entire list by clicking the first object in that list, then holding shift and scrolling down to click the last. Make sure you give everything a material. You can continue using these techniques to complete the appearance of your deathmatch arena. Try searching for each of these labels to apply materials in groups. Stairs. Window. And floor. You can also customize materials and how they apply to objects. Learn more in the custom material tutorial located in our core documentation online at docs.coregames.com. Customizing gameplay. Before we hop in to play a few rounds, let's quickly customize the gameplay. Possibly one of the most highly regarded abilities in gaming is none other than the double jump. Let's add double jumping to your game. This feature set is located in player settings. You can find player settings by searching for it in the hierarchy. Open the properties window to see all settings that can be changed for each player. In the jump section, change jump max count to two. Increasing this number will add more jumps and I know what you're thinking, why stop at two jumps? And you're right, you don't have to. You can do four, six, 20, even 100 jumps. But let's take it one jump at a time and start with two. Press the play button to test out double jumping with the space bar. Now let's determine a winner and set the round kill limit. In the top left corner of the screen while in game, you can see that you win the deathmatch by killing 10 opponents. This can be changed in game settings. Search for round kill limit in the hierarchy. Open the properties window, find the kill limit property and change it to two. I know it sounds low, but this is supposed to be a short video. Now start a multiplayer preview of your game and notice you'll win the round by killing an opponent twice. You can customize the UI or user interface instructions. In this case, the game now ends after two kills, but the instructions shown on the screen still tell players to shoot for 10. To fix this, Search for UI text box under game instructions in the hierarchy. Open the properties window. Change the text property to match your game's win condition. Okay, before we finish, let's figure out how we start and make the players begin the game from different positions. Search for spawn point in the hierarchy. Spawn points are where players will start the game. We want to move all spawn points to be further apart. Press V to toggle gizmo visibility and you'll turn on a wireframe view of spawn points, the camera, and trigger boxes. Move the spawn points around the map the same way you would any object. Pro tip, press zero to create a spawn point at your cursor's location. There are more editor shortcuts that can streamline your game creation flow in the core documentation. And that's it. You now have a complete and unique deathmatch style game created entirely in core. If you're ready to test it with real human players, then you can proceed to publish your game. Check out the tutorial video and more on our YouTube channel, or read up on it in the core documentation. And make sure to tune in to our core live streams to interact with our other creators, engineers, developers, and artists in the community. Be sure to drop us a line in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching and creating in core.